Okay. <clears throat> Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren. This is my very first video for the patch 7.2. I've been trying to get on a PTR and so far I have not been able to test anything. But we have we have websites like Wowhead and MMO Champion, which are always focused to providing you guys the best possible content in terms of some of the updates. And here's one of them that I found very, very interesting. This one has to do with your artifact weapons. So you know how there's a whole spiel of, oh, cool artifact weapons. Oh, we get all these cool traits. Oh, we get like three uh, major traits, which are like the dragon traits. And then we have that extra one that we have to farm that we'll have to farm for season three. Well, they added more to the artifact weapons. And I don't know if this is finalized. This is probably not finalized. They'll probably add more to this as we go on. But this is what we have right now. They added some interesting extra few mechanics to every single spec of Rogue. And I want to take a look at those as well as just how much AP you will have to farm. So that's the purpose of this. First of all, we'll take a look at Outlaw, which is my main spec. We'll take a look at Assassination and Subtlety in terms of my excitement for them. And in terms of like the biggest changes. So if Subtlety didn't get that many changes in my personal opinion. But you guys will be able to tell me that in the comments. Let's take a look at the weapon itself. We have the original weapon right here with Crystal Blades and you just start leveling up here and there, left and right, side to side, uh, going through the main shindig, but look, we have actually more traits on our right side and we have the same thing for subtlety and assassination. We have traits on our right side. Now, what are these traits? Those are very interesting traits. First one we have for Outlaw is Cyber Metrics. Or Saber Metrics. Saber Metrics is an empirical analysis of baseball, especially baseball statistics that measure in-game activity. If this is a joke, then pass way, my, way past my head. Anyway, Saber Metrics for any of the baseball players out there. Going from an outlaw to world star baseball uh, guy. I don't, I don't fucking watch sports. Um, Saber Metrics increase the critical chance of a Saber Slash, which is awesome because a lot of our damage has been changed up to Saber Slash, even in PvP. So the fact that we can crit with that a lot more often is great. That means a lot more consistent damage. And let's see just how powerful it is. 1 point, 2 point, 3 point, 4, 20% increase to that ability. That is insane. That is insanity. Thank you, Blizzard. I do appreciate that. This is actually an awesome trait. I do like it because it is basically just going to increase our damage tenfold with just the way we play. It even might even shift away the damage for Outworks, maybe kind of possibly away from deeper strat to vigor for PvP, maybe. Uh, very possible because a lot of our damage will be from saber slashes. We'll have to see how it works, but it definitely will do a little bit of shifting of power in terms of some of the talents we have. Let's take a look at the next one that we unlock. Dreadblades Vigor causes your Dreadblades to increase your energy regeneration by a percentage. The gener the energy region is real. That is insane. We don't know how much it's gonna be, but we'll have to see it. I think it'll be like five or ten percent. Um, if it will be higher, I will lose my fucking mind because it's still a lot. I feel like Outlaw Rogues already have good energy region. I mean, expensive abilities, but good range region on top of that, so not a bad idea. Then we have a major trait, Loaded Dice, which is what a lot of you were talking about. They literally looked at it in forums and they're like, hmm, I think this, I think these guys have some good ideas. Rejoice, Blizzard took your ideas, like fucking confetti everywhere, motherfuckers. This is great, right? Okay, let's see what it actually does, because it could be useless. Activating a drone rush causes the next roll of the bones to grant at least two matches. Oh, the, uh, well, I don't know what the hell two matches means. I'm gonna guess two buffs that you can roll, which is awesome. I think this is pretty great because when you use a drone rush and then you'll guarantee yourselves two buffs, that means in PvE at least, that's basically you, you just need two buffs to start dealing real damage, which is also awesome for PvP because you'll have a little bit more better lineup. Plus, you can get your cooldowns back for a drone rush faster and faster and faster. Um, I don't know how this functions with one of our PvP talents. Uh, <laughs> let me find it real quick. Control is king. Every time a drone rush activates, what if on every stun you are guaranteed to get true rolls? In PvP, that would be bananas. Because that would mean that every time you stun somebody, like cheap shot, roll, you always get two buffs, no matter what you do. So, I... I just got Outlaw Rogues nerfed. That's it. In this video, it happened. Outlaw Rogues are already getting nerfed. Controller skin is getting ruined. I mean, chances are it won't function with it, but I just thought, you know, what if? So this means that true bearing is going to be the way to go. Learn how to play Roll of the Bones because when you can have a drone rush a lot more often, you can have those guaranteed buffs a lot more often. So that is a good idea. Then we have the next one, last one, called Infinite. I'm pretty sure it's a placeholder name. It increases damage dealt by percentage. Rank 20. My question is, is basically the same thing as this passive one, 
but it seems like you can just start sinking points into this, at least on uh, this website, without having to worry about anything else. So you can have like, what, 20% increase without having to worry on any of these? I'm pretty sure the side unlocks after you fully unlock your weapon. I highly doubt that you'll just be able to unlock it just like that. But let's say we'd reset it. I just wonder how much artifact power this is going to be because let's say you build a full weapon and you're like man I hate farming in legion right I love legion as an expansion but the farm for AP is just uh, so annoying right you don't want to do that right who wants to just sit there and farm forever you are a gamer not a farmer right what kind of audience does Blizzard think they are pandering to but let's say we have oh wow it's actually broken you can just put points everywhere else um you will say you have a full built up weapon right so that means you spend about uh, 5 million AP grinding to build up your weapon. And then you feel like me, who has about 11 points in, I think. Yeah, yeah, 11 points because I'm 10%. I spent about, what is it, 1,000, 30 million AP, right? So I spent 30 million AP. To get your weapon up to full, you need like, what, 60, basically 50. You need 50 million just for the extra trait. What if all these extra stuff unlocked? Just how much AP do you need? You're gonna need about. Well, let's let's see, let's see. I'll actually just do some uh, Jerry rigged math over here. Let's say you got all the full points into this, right? We're just gonna do this right now, just see how much AP farming there would be. Oh, what is this number? What am I looking at? Okay, <laughs> oh my God, two one nine one six six three three zero. Oh my fuck! <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, so that would be. So, so you have about 65 million built up with your weapon as you like once you have it fully filled out right you gotta still earn for this extra trait after let's say you have your full weapon leveled up to so get the side trait that's about 153 million nine hundred and ten thousand ap i'm pretty sure this number is a placeholder because that is a lot unless they're gonna increase our research which is chances are maybe this is a hell of a lot to level blizzard and you guys are expecting people to have the extra trait? Holy crap, the farm is gonna be real. <laughs> oh my god. But let's first, let's not freak out over the number. Chances are this is a placeholder. So let's all take this with a grain of salt. That is all I'm asking you guys to do. Let's take a look at the other uh, specs while we're at it. Just to distract us from the farming nightmare. I'm joking. But let's take a look at other specs. We have the first one for Assassination Slayer's Precision. Countless kills have only increased the deadliness of the fearsome blades. Increases all damage. What the hell? That's not... It increases the damage of Garod by 4%. Now it got it right. So Strangle literally increases your Garod damage. That's awesome. That's an interesting idea. Uh, and it could be up to 16%. Wow, that's a solid damage increase. I'm surprised because that's like damage, direct damage increase to an ability. That's interesting. I, I just don't know really... That's awesome, in my opinion. Uh, dense concoction. Crimson Vial reduces the damage you take by a percentage. This effect reduces by temp by a percentage every two seconds. That is weird, because I don't really understand this one. I guess it does make sense that assassination is like the least defensive, because it's like kind of you're kind of like a fish out of water, just kind of in the middle of nowhere. So to be able to have uh, Crimson Vial available for you in order to just like just chug down and then here we go it has some defenses up that's pretty interesting um i just don't know how good it's gonna be it's an interesting ability i just don't know how it's good it's gonna be from pvp perspective pve it offers you nothing really um with well, outlaw was the outlaw job blades increase your energy regen i guess there's one gonna be gonna be one trade that doesn't exactly increase your damage but energy regen does increase your damage this does increase your damage <laughs> I don't really know how I feel about it. Let me know how you guys think about an assassination. That's cool. I mean, for PvP, it's going to be cool. Then we have a cool one. Sinister's Circulation. Uh, successful poison application reduce the cooldown of Kingsbane by by seconds. Kingsbane, your artifact weapon, you're going to be able to spam it back to back to back. The more poisons you put into the enemy. That's awesome. That's a cool way of going about it. I, that might be OP, actually, in my opinion. Because you basically can make... You could basically... if. If this could be really, really strong, this could be up all the time because successful applications, that's like from auto attacks and venoms and everything. That's crazy. That's going to definitely change the rotation. Uh, I feel like this is going to influence the traits or talents into the uh, talents normally. Most people are running like Master Poisoner. That's pretty weird because I was thinking it was going to be a whole new game because I feel like for Outlaw, you are uh, prompting ability to have Slice and Dice maybe because more Saber Slashes and yada, yada, yada. But this is interesting. I don't really know how I feel about it. I don't know. This is interesting though. Sinister Circulation. So assassination ones are like, Outlaw Rogues are like. Let's take a look at the uh, subtlety. Etched in Shadow. And this is kind of one of the things where I wanted to say like, I don't think these are all that exciting in my opinion, but you guys let me know. Etched in Shadow, once you 
buff it up. The effectiveness of Symbols of Death is a flat 4% damage increase, which is cool. So that means you have like 24% damage increase. I feel like the difference between 20% damage increase and 24 isn't like massive in a long run, especially in PvE, I can definitely see this be a change. In PvP for short-term situations, I can definitely see a change, but like direct damage of Garrote, which you can spread on more than one target, or a critical strike of your Saber Slash, I feel like is so consistent. I don't really know. It's like, a, it's, a, it's a good, good trait. I just don't know if it's like a, as, as like interesting as the other two specs, you know what I mean? So this is cool. Uh, then we have an extra trait right here. Shadows Whisper. Deepening Shadows reduces the remaining cooldown of Shadow Dance by an additional uh, se uh, few seconds per comp point spent. That is awesome. That means you're basically going to be in Shadow Dance 24-7, especially for PvP. Um, I mean, a lot of people kind of were talking about, hey, why don't you bring Shadow Dance to like, you know, a one minute cooldown, the last 10 seconds that we kind of have burst window and, you know, we we'll wait for it for a while. And Blizzard is just like, oh, is that what you guys want? Uh, how about we just have you guys, uh, basically give you the ability to be in Shadow Dance all the time with Shadow's Whisper. It's like kind of going the other way around. So it's like devs are listening, but then they're not really listening. So you're kind of just like, you can't really tell. Um, and then we have the final trait, Feeding Frenzy, which is interesting. And Gorma's Bite does sound like, you know, a bite ability, so... Gorma's Bite causes your next three finisher moves to consume no energy. I don't really get this one. I'll be honest. Because the way that subtlety already is, you need to have energy, like for a Viscerate or for a Night Blade, but then you, after you, let's say you have spent like 35, you have 35 energy for an Eviscerate. You spend it, you gain it back, because you gain 40 energy back. So basically, per count point spent, you have a chance on a finisher to gain back energy. So you need to have 35 energy to get back, and you'll actually gain 40. So I guess this removes that capability. I don't think this is going to be a direct damage increase. It's cool with Garbo's Bite, but Garbo's Bite also gives you energy. So then it's like, you're going to be so, so much energy. I mean, it might kind of switch the spec towards Deeper Stratagem and make it much easier to play with Deeper Strat, where your energy regen is kind of slower and might give you capabilities with some of the other talents to just like pick something more offensive and damage based, like DPS, cooldown kind of strats and kind of abilities in terms of talents and not have to worry about energy as much. That's what I'm thinking, but it's not a direct damage increase. It just opens up opportunities for some of the other talents. Which is why I said I didn't think subtlety ones were all that exciting. Because they're not like explosive game changer kind of stuff. It's like, okay, well, I guess this gives us some few options in terms of talents. But like Assassination, uh, except for the crim uh, vial, Crimson Vial, I think that's a little weird for like actual damage increase. You're giving a defensive to a class that needs, I would, I would think, needs more damage, or let alone more CC. And I guess that's cool. It will be interesting to see what some of the other specs have. But for an outwork, I think those are some of the best ones that we got. They listened. They listened to the public. Like, I wasn't really talking about, hey, can we have, like, a guarantee? I mean, I guess I talked about, like, hey, maybe we should change up Roll the Bones a bit. But, like, uh, I don't know. After learning to play around with it and accepting the RNG, I'm like, well, okay, that's not that bad. You know, I'm fine with it. We kind of just, like, learn to play with it, really. But this, on Regen Rush, you next Roll the Bones. Ah! Two bones, and if it works with uh, Controller's King, that would be awesome because every time you open up with a cheap shot, roll the bones, two buffs every time. Let's go get some damage, you know? That's 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 crazy cool, and especially if it can work in PvP. But even if not, then true bearing, and then you get a charge as often as possible. For loaded dice, it'll just be a more of an explosive, more of a easier to line up, easier to predict, easier to manage kind of playstyle. And I think a lot of players will be very, very happy. Uh, just to see this just work out in the game. I am very excited to see this going on. I'm very excited to see all this happening. This is some of the coolest changes, and this is probably not finalized changes, so please do not render them as the final changes of any sort. But this is what I have for you guys for the day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the new changes to the artifact power and artifact traits that are being added in the game. And if you think any of them are interesting, let me know which ones you like the most. Do you like the changes to assassination the most? Maybe you like the simple yet subtle subtlety changes, or do you really like them? Out the rogue loaded dice changes. Let me know everything in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.